Well, hello everyone and welcome to my personal top 10 reviews. I shall be doing the top 10 review of every doctor, top 10 stories of every doctor should I say. And I thought I'd start with my top 10 favourite John Pertwee stories. And I'll just give a very very brief review on why I think they're in my top 10. And I'll start from going from 10 downwards and so first of all we have at number 10 Terror of the Autons which for me of all the Auton stories done today is by far the best Roger Delgado makes a brilliant entry into Doctor Who as the master Katie Manning makes a brilliant entry as the buffoonish but lovable Joe Grant and also Richard Franklin makes a really reasonable debut as Mike Yates too. And the uh, Autons with their freaky carnival masks when handing out daffodils is one of my favourite images from the Classic Who series. So I really think they're really freaky and really add to the atmosphere of the show, which is brilliantly directed by Barry Letts. And that is why Terry Autons is number 10. Then we have her absolute belt of a story, which has always been one of my favourite stories ever since I first watched it. And coming in at number nine in my favourites of John Pertwee, we have The Claws of Axos. Bernard Holly, in particular, really impressed me with his performance as a leader of the Axons in this story. And I also thought the interior design of the spaceship was really imaginative and brilliant, considering the limited resources and money the BBC team had to make these shows back in the day, all those years ago, 1972, or whenever it was. And this is packed full of action, and I, I love the Axons. They're one of my favourite monsters, and that's why this comes in at number nine. Then we have, at number eight, Carnival Not Monsters. Personally, I think one of Rob Holmes' very best scripts for the story. Really imaginative, and Drashigs are a superbly realised monster, considering they are only hand puppets. And also the characters in this are absolutely brilliant. And there's some really great comedy, mixed with some great action scenes, and the screech of the Drashigs is a really, really mean-sounding thing. And you have to watch this story to believe it and it's absolutely brilliant that's why it comes in at number eight then we have at number seven uh, absolute belter from barry letts and robert sloman in the green death the giant maggots in uh, absolutely fantastically realized and john durf as the computer voice of boss is absolutely brilliant and Jer Jerome, Jeremy Willis, or Jerome Willis, is absolutely superb as Stevens in this story, a really, really good villain. And also, John Pertby is really, really, all, all, almost to the height of his powers in this story. And it's absolutely brilliant, and it's a six-parter, but it doesn't seem like it, and it goes by like nothing to me. And I think it is a class story, and that way, that's why this comes in at number seven. At number six, we have Day of the Daleks, which I, for one, think is absolutely, absolutely an excellent story, which seems to me to have been a Terminator, a Terminator the film series based on this script, of this story, because there are so many similarities between that film series and this story. But this story was excellent. It also featured the Ogrons, which I thought was one of the best ever monsters created for, hit for Who, one of the most realistic monsters ever as well. And that's why this story comes, and also for the reason that Aubrey Woods is brilliant and fantastic as a controller in this story, and that's why he this one comes in at number six. Then we have number five, Invasion of Dinosaurs. Now, I've seen from lots of people this story gets a lot and lot of ribbon for its absolutely diabolical dinosaur effects. And actually, really, if you actually took the time to look at it properly, only the T-Rex really is that bad in this story. And the story itself is actually very, very well done and raises some really good moral issues that are really well tackled by Malcolm Hulk in what I think is his best story. Uh, with him actually being credited as a writer in any way. 
and it's also the uh, Liz Slade and the shining story of hers for John Perry and that she takes the initiative a lot in this story and actually it gets to do some more stuff than usual that, that was common later with the Tom Baker stories and that is why this story is a really really gritty and really really good and a really strong theme throughout and it's absolutely brilliantly acted by everyone involved and that is why this one's in at number five Then, at number four, we have the brilliant Ambassadors of Death. Some people may think the seven parters of John's first series as a Doctor were too overlong and too padded out, but actually I think these sort of stories were absolutely some of the best Doctor Who stories ever. Ambassadors of Death has so much action all the way through it, has brilliant performance from John, who's already completely found his feet as a Doctor and he's absolutely superb. And also this Ambassadors is really, really good idea and really, really, really good twi twist of a story and one you never know what's going to happen next. And it's absolutely relentless and I just love this story and that's why it comes in for me at number four. And then at number three... We have an absolutely fantastic and brilliant story. And this story also includes my favourite cliffhanger ever, which is a cliffhanger to episode 6 on Doctor Who, on Inferno. This story is just absolutely excellently acted, brilliantly performed by everyone involved. And Olaf Pooley, who's sadly now deceased, but absolutely played a rollicking and brilliant villain in, Prof in Professor Stallman. And it was also notable for Christopher Benjamin playing his first role with Sir Keith Gold. And I also thought he was just as good as he later was as, as Henry Gordon Jago and Talon's Wayne Chang. And this story, I love the perception. And I thought but as well that uh, Alistair Cook left Bridge Stewart. And Nicholas Courtney in his reverse role as brigade leader was absolutely superb. And that's why this this story comes in at number three. Now, this is probably a story uh, that will probably surprise a lot of people, uh, being so high up in my list of favourite John Perry stories, but I absolutely love The Monster of Peladon. I've absolutely loved it ever since I was a little boy when I first saw it. It was absolute to me. It just does never relenting, unrelenting in action, and the Ice Warriors returned to be baddies after they were goodies in the Curse of Peladon. But Curse of Peladon, I just found it to be a bit slow, and yet this is two episodes longer, and yet it's so so much more better paced, and it's got so many aliens and so much happening in it, and some really really good acting, some great acting. From Alan Bennion uh, as the uh, leader of the Ice Warriors, as Azix here, and Sonny Caldineth again returning to an Ice Warrior role brilliantly, and also Ralph Watson as Etis, who's one of my favourite psychotic uh, uh, people ever to appear in Doctor Who, and that is why this story is my second favourite John Pertwee story. And then at number one, my all time favourite John story. Mind of Evil. This story I would pick as being Roger Delgado's finest ever performance as a master. He was absolutely superb in Terror of the Autons, but here he just settled into a role and it's just like he'd already been playing it for about 10 years. He's absolutely superb. He's suave and brilliant and absolutely an, an brilliant Moriarty to Dr. Sherlock Holmes. And also, there's, John is also at the height of his powers and I love the Keller machine. It's a brilliant idea. It's used really well throughout the story and it's a cracking story. It's full of action quite a lot of death in it but actually but it's and i don't know why it's just a you i actually think it should be at least a pg if not one of the very few cases where i think doctor in the classic series should have been 12 rating but it's absolutely superb story john at his height of his powers katie manning really finding her feet as joe uh, and nicholas courtney also being fantastic in this episode and that just adds to make this story absolutely 
absolutely unbeatable and definitely the top of favorite one of mine of john's stories and one i'll always watch again and again it's absolutely brilliant and what i love about this re-release on dvd is the color has been restored superbly too and it just adds to my enjoyment of this absolutely brilliant story that i will always love and it will always be my number one john Pertwee story and it um, that is rounds up my john perry top 10 dot two stories and i hope you'll stay tuned for later uh review segments so i will do some as often as i can and it will all be of all the doctors including the new doctors thank you very much